Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about space, the final frontier. Now, actually, in tactically, we're going to be talking about uh, the Space Graphics Toolkit for Unity, the final tool we are going to cover in the Mega Bundle that is ending very, very soon. I'm recording this on Friday. I'm presenting this on Saturday, so you're looking at two days left. And what we've looked at here so far is we looked at the train grid system, uh, we looked at uh, the Dungeon Architect, which is really quite cool. And then what we are going to look at today is the Space Graphics Toolkit. And this one is the one that had the most requests for the people that wanted to see Mud Bun or Motion Matching. I apologize. But instead, we are heading off to space. As I mentioned earlier, Unity Asset. Here you can see a sample of the Space Graphics Toolkit in action. And what this basically has done is rendered an infinite universe. And we'll look at how this actually goes about doing it. So this would be your setting. So this is space itself. We kind of look around. There is everything that is generated. Easy enough. All right, so we're going to show you how all of these things work together. Let's stop that. And then we're going to go take a look. There's two parts to this. Uh, we have this uh, elliptical galaxy built of all these various different things you can see in the editor, which we will get rid of all of them for now. This one especially. So this Starfield uh, elliptical um, generator right here. Uh, these guys, they're doing all of that. So what we've got instead are the two backgrounds. These are kind of for infinite layering. These are of type SGT background. All of this stuff basically is scripts. These ones will only show up uh, in the actual render. We've got one for doing stars and one for doing clouds. Let's turn clouds off. So all we now, now have is our star generator. So this is going to be infinite in scope all the way in the background. So we basically just created a universe of stars. Uh, you got control over how they look, how they're created. The, uh, the layout of them, so on. You can squash them down, etc. So you can actually control how they're actually displayed. But that is the one thing going on. We've also got a set of clouds. So this gives us kind of, again, an infinite background in which to start creating our universe. So these ones only show up when you run the game. So you can see the clouds being superimposed. Those two working together give you basically the universe. This is your infinite amount of space around you. So now let's look at the other aspects that come into play. So we've got, uh, I'll do the clouds last because they're the biggest. So we've got a set of inner stars being generated using an elliptical star field. Uh, so we'll turn that one back on. And there you can see the results. So if you need a number of stars around, they're pretty straightforward. Mostly they're just textures. You've got control over the color of the stars via gradient right here. So if you'd rather your stars had a slightly different color, uh, you can change any one of these colors. So let's make these a little bit more blue. Like so, and there you see the star colors changed and immediately there. Again, you've got a lot of control over how they're shown. You can stretch them out. Uh, you have different textures for near and far. Uh, you can change the number of stars in your universe very easily. So that is your stars. And then we've got another set. This is outer stars, basically just stars that are further out. Pretty straightforward, turn that back on. And you've got basically two layers of stars showing up. And then finally, a set of clouds. So this is your elliptical cloud field. And we'll show that one there. And this is what gave us that blur. I actually find this a little bit on the, uh, the strong side of things. But there you go. All these things work together. And now we have basically a universe. A universe that is unpopulated, uh, but a universe nonetheless. So once you've got this done, you can actually start adding other entities into your uh, world. I'll use other examples right here. So let's do uh, an asteroid belt. So here we go. You can create asteroid belts here. So there is a couple things going on in this scene. We have a star, which is the focus point of our center. So our star here is a light, a normal light, and then an SGT light. Uh, this is more for dealing with um, the galaxy sizes that we're dealing with, uh, and a billboard there. So that is the star at the, end or at the center of our universe. Again, you're seeing there are SGT specific versions to work with on there. And then we have our asteroid belt. The asteroid belt, pretty straightforward. This is, oh, I think it's, it's a container. Let me open it up so I can show you. It is a type belt simple. This is an SGT belt simple. You see you have a number of settings for controlling how this asteroid belt is generated. So for example, we can change the uh, inner radius like so, so we can make that and make it tighter and then have it have go out further. Oh, so that speed, sorry, outer radius, available like so. And you can tweak things accordingly. Also, you've got control over the speed. If we go ahead and play this one, you will see how the um, asteroid belt, okay, so I may have turned the speed up a little high. <laughs> but there you see an asteroid belt in action. Now let's say you wanna obviously start getting into the world of planets. We got a couple of options for planets. We've got say Jovian planets, like this guy right here, uh, a gas giant style planet. 
you see it is made out of a Jovian, SGT's Jovian, and then you set a number of uh, values on it. This guy has lightning crackling on its surface. Let's go ahead and see the end result of this Jovian style planet. All right, here you go. You get in close enough, you can see lightning crackling on the surface and atmosphere. So there's minimalistic atmosphere here. So you're seeing, what is that, Aurora Borealis? You see atmospheric effects happening here, but the style of planet isn't really lending itself to that. So what you're gonna probably wanna do is have more Earth-like planets. So we have this example right here, and this is, where did you go, Earth? Come on. All right, let's just find our planet, focus on it. Oh, this is in script only. All right, to hell with that. What we're gonna do is do this from scratch. All right, new, new scene built in, so you get an idea of everything that's involved. So a couple things go on. Uh, we go ahead and do a create, create new space graphics tool. And here you see all the various different things you create, things like black holes, lenses, um, thrusters, flares, cloud spheres, um, asteroid belts like we saw earlier on. But what I'm going to do now is just create a planet. So to create a planet, here we go. Our new planet is created. We gotta set a couple of things. First off, we need to give it a mesh. We'll give it a simple spherical mesh. Uh, and then a material, and we'll come in here. We've got a number of planet materials come with it. Obviously, you probably want to create your own. So if you want to have like a dark star look, you can do so like that. All right, so here we go. Let's focus on our planet. So there we go. We just created a planet with a dark star look to it. Now let's do this more of a traditional planet. So um, here, that one will work. An obsidian planet. All right, here we go. So we'll create... This planet right here, we'll use that texture. So you see here, you obviously, you could use a variety of different textures to create a variety of different planets. You have control over the size of your planet, like so. And now what you may wanna do is go ahead and add, say, some atmosphere to it. So again, just come down here, SGT, and we can go atmosphere. So we're gonna create an atmosphere for our planet. There's a couple things we need to do. We need to do an inner depth and an outer depth uh, texture and mesh. Both of these are easy to create. Basically just come on down here, click this button, and then we go down a little bit more and we click this button and it's created both for us. Now all that's really left to do is we set the outer mesh radius of our environment. You see it's growing out right there. So we can do a little bit past the outer extern and there is our environment. We can change the color of it right here. So let's say we want to be a bit more of a bluish tinge like so. Probably want to jack that alpha value way down. Like so, so there is our um, atmosphere in place. And we've got control over it. Like for example, how high the atmosphere goes beyond the planet, how much fog to have on the inside. Oops, went too far. How much fog inside, how much fog outside. That way if you fly into the atmosphere, it will work accordingly. Um, kind of neat stuff. Again, you've got control over um, the atmosphere depth texturing over here, and you can keep adding stuff to it. So if you wanted to have, for example, lightning cracking on the surface of your planet, come on down here, you're gonna notice you have SGT uh, lightning, it's available right here, lightning spawner, like so, or let's say you wanted to have uh, a ring around your um, planet, we could do a belt custom, like so. And now we just go on down to our new belt and we have to give it a texture. So basically the texture for our um, asteroids in our asteroid belt. So we'll go ahead pick one up there. And then it should, why did you not create it? Okay, so outer asteroids, how, oh. Okay, we're gonna add a camera, by the way. So our camera, our camera just got SGT camera. It doesn't really do much to it. By the way, on the topic of camera, you also have some tools here for, um, yeah, I think it's SGT uh, move. Uh, or we do follow camera, look camera. All right, I'm gonna stop with the SGT because that's actually making things more confusing. So I'm gonna go here, Space Graphics Toolkit. There's a bit of a bug and it's offsetting my mouse from where I wanna select and it's making things very annoying. Uh, SGC camera, look and move. So you can add, and then it will just automatically give you simple, okay, that bug is getting really irritating. Um, come on, line up, there we go. Or if maybe it's just a leg. All right, so I did move already, so now I just want look. All right, so here we go. So we go, oh, I wanted move, damn it. Let's try that again, SGC camera, Move. All right, so I have look and move. So now you're gonna get automatic movement controls with your camera. Now back to our planet. Like so, come on planet, and our asteroid belt. 
Oh, I did a custom belt instead of a simple one. Oh, that's annoying. So now I need to actually define how many asteroids I want. Let's see if 100. Let's see what 100 looks like. Come on. Nah. You know what? I'm going to... I'm going to make my life a whole lot easier. I'm going to remove the belt custom. This off by one bug for selecting in Unity right now is driving me absolutely nuts. Belt, simple. That's the one I want. All right, so that is an asteroid belt. And now again, we have to define the asteroids we wish to populate our asteroid belt with. There we go. All right, so that is a whole lot simpler. So there is the asteroid belt created around our planet that now has an atmosphere. Probably want to move it. Uh, outside of the uh, atmosphere, I don't know squat about space, by the way. So, uh, so orbit offset. Okay, that's the wrong thing. So I want to do. So we can change out the random seed, by the way. The thickness—that's the thickness of the asteroids themselves. So inner radius. There we go. So I'll move it out more, and then our outer radius obviously needs to be higher in value. So there we go. So now we have it going around the outside and we can control the speed of both the outer and the inner. And let's go ahead and take a look at our created planet. So you see how you could use all of these pieces together. I should now have move controls so I can look around and, ooh, they're very sensitive. But as you can see, we can navigate around and there is our asteroid belt orbiting around our planet with an atmosphere. Now, obviously, this will look a lot better with a star field in the background and so on. By the way, everything you're seeing here, you can do procedurally and you can do it with code. Uh, one last thing to note is they do have packs available. So this one comes with a basic pack of assets. So if you're wondering, okay, well, what about planet textures and different kinds of things I can work with or all these various different examples? So you can see uh, a disk. We did an asteroid belt already. Uh, Earth-sized planet. Where are you, planet? Let's focus on the planet. All right. Oh, yeah, this was the procedure run. Terrestrial planet. And you can see, where are you going, planet? Oh, that one's, that's a weird, I think it's got a weird draw distance going on here. Um, stormy planet. So this one should actually show, so you can see the, the various different lighting effects you can get. This one may actually have the lightning done on it. So yeah, you can see lightning crackling across the surface, like so. So you've got the ability to create all kinds of different stuff. This is one of the asset packs that comes with it. So that's like the various different uh, textures and such you need to do these various different things. And if you're interested, there are other packs available. Let's head on over and take a look at this thing in the store. All right, so here we are. Uh, this is the asset's regular price. You're looking at 100 bucks, so it does make it a really good deal to pick it up in this toolkit if you're interested in picking it up. Again, you can do uh, much nicer looking atmospheric effects if you play around with them than what we managed to, to create here. It should give you the ability to actually create like a no man's sky type transition from earth down to the ground, although you're still gonna need your own train engine and so on and so forth. But again, normally it's a hundred bucks. You can see right over here, uh, if you go, sorry, that's not where I want to go. This is where I want to go. So the creator himself has another pack available. This is the space graphics planets. So if you need to have a number of different planning styles, uh, with different looks, etc. There is another pack available. You can see it is 30 bucks. It works obviously with the Space Graphics Toolkit. So if you're trying to create a variety of different planets and you do not want to create, the, there's nothing to stop you from creating these textures yourself. In fact, there's some tools out there specifically for creating planet styles. But if you want, uh, there are a number of packs available here as well if you're interested in picking that up. But ultimately, that is not part of the toolkit. The, the toolkit thing that ends in two days, uh, that is uh, a separate purchase. So do be aware of that. So what we just checked out there is the space graphics toolkit as you can see it's normally 100 bucks so if you want it you're basically getting it for better than half price and you're getting a bunch of other stuff thrown in free if you want to check it out i also covered the train grid system which is a really um th this graphic doesn't sell what this is capable this is really cool if you're doing an uh, like an rts or a um, strategy game like a, a turn-based risk style something like that or an rpg with a traditional grid or hex based system this guy is really powerful in what it can do uh, and then the Dungeon Architect is really, really cool if you're creating semi-random and random environments uh, 
or just basically as a starting point for creating your dungeon environments or a city generation as well. This is a really neat, uh, basically procedural level generator. And then finally, we just saw the Space Graphics Toolkit, and that is it. No more videos on this bundle because you only have two days left. So if you want to pick that up, uh, link is down below. You use that link, I get a small commission, and you get my thanks for doing so. So let me know what you think of the Space Graphics Toolkit, and uh, yeah, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.